Well, hey there. I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth here on this rainy Saturday in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm excited to be here yet again. We're going to listen to a sample. I always say it, but I always am genuinely pumped up to hear your work and uh, just hear where you're at. And today is no different. We've got one sample today from Griffin. And the reason we're only doing one is I'm putting a bit of a twist on it. We're going to listen to Griffin's sample, give some feedback. And then because Griffin had some specific questions about processing, making demos, tips on that, I figured what better way to explain it than to just do it. So I'm going to take the script Griffin used and make a demo of my own. Uh, I'm not going to post it anywhere. It's purely for demonstration purposes, um, but I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to make your own demo for what it's worth. With that said, before we dive into the details, if you like this stuff, you find it helpful, and you think other folks might as well, if you wouldn't mind clicking the buttons, helps folks find us. And then uh, if you have any questions about this, anything else voiceover related, drop me a line below. Hit me up on my website. Submit a sample via the form below. Uh, there's coaching on my website. You have so many resources available to you, if that's your speed. Uh, <laughs> enough of that. Let's dive in. Griffin, take us away. Expert instructors, engaging content, and 24-7 access ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. eLearning Academy. Learn. Grow. Succeed. Griffin, there's a lot going on here that I really dig. Firstly, your tone. Completely conversational. When folks ask for a conversational tone, this is kind of what we're going for. Uh, I get the sense that you're talking to me. It's very personal. It's intimate, but not in a creepy way. Uh, the way that someone described it to me once was, imagine yourself in a coffee shop, sitting across from someone at a table, both of you sipping your beverages of choice and carrying on a conversation. That is the level we want, and that's the level you've got here. Bella. Another couple things technically that I really enjoy. This first section... Uh, Expert instructors. Engaging content and 24-7 access ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. There's a lot of stuff that you're doing that's really great. Firstly, with the list, the expert instructors engaging content 24-7 access. Anytime bullet points show up, which is often, it's really helpful to make sure that they are connected, that they're fluid, that they flow together, and yet at the same time, that each of them has their own individual flavor, their own individual texture, Sort of like a box of chocolates. Uh, and you do that really successfully. A couple things that I use in my own work that helps me to do that sort of de differentiation, delineation, is to, as I just did, number them on my fingers. Expert instructors, engaging content, and 24-7 access. Listing it, my body takes over, it takes me out of my head, puts it in something physical. It's a really great way to just... Uh, make it easier for yourself. Another way I do that is to put the bullet points around me. Expert instructors, engaging content, and 24-7 access. Sort of like I'm taking folks on a tour of my audio space. Uh, all really well done there. And the other thing that I liked in that first section... Anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. It's similar to the bullet point thing, but with two words, it's sort of a scale and you still want to give them different weights, different textures. But the thing I particularly like about this one is your anywhere. It's final. It's giving us closure. It leaves that first section behind. We're moving on to a new section, which is e-learning academy. Learn, grow, succeed. Whenever the f name of the product or company that the ad is for shows up, particularly for the first time the name shows up, it's really, really vital that that word, that name, is given the place of honor it deserves in this ad. That's very high and mighty for capitalism, but uh, it's important. You're telling this this entity, this product, this company's story. You're giving them space to the masses, and that needs to be lifted up. Uh, a way I like to think of it in this moment, as well as others, is the whole ad is sort of a pyramid. And everything, your read, the music, the text, 
It's all foundational, and the very golden-plated tip of the pyramid is the name of the company, and it has to be that important, I think. All to say, I think you pull it off successfully, and listening to you deliver it in the flow of this ad, I think is really nice. However, listening to it by itself... E-Learning Academy. It feels to me just a smidge rushed, perhaps, a little uh, too quick uh, for me. And that could be me with my director's cap. All to say, if you so chose, I would maybe just give it another shot with that and uh, give it a little bit more space to breathe, if you if you wish. And then this last bullet point section. Learn, grow, succeed. Learn, grow, succeed. You do really well with the list again. Voila. Uh, my only critical thought here is the word succeed. Uh, because it's that word specifically, and because it's the final word of this ad, which both the way you've constructed it and by virtue of the copy itself, it's the thesis. If you come to this place, you will succeed. And we don't want any doubt in our minds. And so what I hear you doing with the shrug uh, it's something that I say often <clears throat> in taking the intonation up. Again, director's hat on, thinking that maybe a period there, a final succeed would be my preference. Uh, so maybe I'll give that a shot when I give it a go here in a second. The last thing that I'll mention for your demo here that I really, really appreciate is your choice of music. I think it complements and lifts your read really, really nicely. And the thing I particularly like are these music or these piano chords. The piano chords in that first bit, as well as the others, whether or not you did it intentionally or just happened naturally, uh, they come often in moments between words. My favorite is this one. Ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. Ding. And it moves us into the next bit. So anytime you have an opportunity for syncing the music to your read like that is a beautiful, or rather syncing your read to the music in the editing process, I think is really valuable. So really well done, Griffin. I dig it. And now I'm going to give it a shot. So we'll open a new file here, and I've got Griffin's script here. Now, normally, uh, if I had the original copy, the formatting of it might give me some clues as to the pacing that they'd like, uh, what they're going for initially. For this one, I didn't have that. I just had Griffin's magnificent performance, so I more or less copy-pasted the way I heard it and wrote it out here. So we'll give it a read. Expert instructors, engaging content, and 24-7 access. Ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. E-Learning Academy. Learn. Grow. Succeed. Now, if this were a full-blown demo production, I would do a few takes, listen to, and then I would put my director's cap back on, listen to what I like from each of them, pick and choose moments, maybe Frankenstein them together, maybe do some new takes, all in the service of just crafting something that I feel is true and honest for both the script and me. Uh, because ultimately a demo is there to represent me in this type of uh, work. So we'll say that this, this take is beautiful, and now we'll move into processing and cleaning it up. Now, for me, uh, I have a lot of, uh, in Adobe Audition, presets that I use for different microphones, different types of things. I'm going to go by scratch and just roughly break down what I would do from square one. So my effects, I always go in a subtractive fashion, personal preference, uh, meaning I put the things first in my effects chain, that will take away the most information, that will subtract the most information. First up, always, is my isotope mouth declicker. These are roughly the settings that I use just about every time. Through trial and error, I've found that those work best for me and my mouth clicks. If you would like a declicker native and uh, included with Adobe Audition, you go down to Noise Reduction Restoration, automatic click remover and there it is uh, there are little presets that you can choose from if you want to mess around with that i'm going to stick with isotope for the time being <clears throat> next up i'm going to put a gate in there that's just to make things easier for me to to tame my noise floor a bit even though i don't really have one here of any note it'll just make my life easier down the line 
Uh, settings for this, I have other videos going in depth about noise gates and expanders, how to set them up. And I'm not going to use a compressor or a limiter at this junction, partly because I have uh, with my universal audio interface, I have compression going into this live as I'm speaking now. So I'm not going to double down on compression. I'm just going to leave it at the audio gate. And then the last thing that I'll do is a bit of an EQ. Now with my EQ, I'm not trying to change the tone of my sound at all. I'm not trying to uh, change my voice tone in any way. I'm just cleaning up my audio more or less. Uh, so first thing, always, always, always a high pass filter. Again, I have other videos going into detail about how to use this. Uh, I'm gonna throw on a low pass filter as well, why not? And the last thing that I'll do for this microphone because it's a little darker, it doesn't have a presence boost like some other microphones that I have, like say uh, a Neumann or a uh, um, Sennheiser 416. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit of a presence boost here in the form of a high shelf. I'm gonna take this down to about 10,000 Hertz and I'm gonna boost it by about three dB. And that's just to give it a little bit extra clarity and lift it up above the music a smidge more that's all i'm going to do to clean it up boom apply ta-da there we go the last thing i'm going to do before i turn up the volume on this is just go in and hunt out the breaths i see one here so i'm going to silence that i have a silencing hot key in there and then i'll just take out that and for good measure take out the back end there we go clean up is done. Now I need to get it ready to go over the music by turning the volume up on my uh, voiceover here. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. The first is in the same effects rack with a limiter. The one I like is the hard limiter. And I like my peaks to be at around minus 2 dB for things like this. And then I need to do the input boost, meaning it's going to turn all this up to hit that 2 dB mark. Um, the way I figure that out, how much I need to boost it by, uh, I look at where minus two is, and then I look at where my peaks are on average. And it looks like if I go across here, oh, between minus 15 dB and minus 13 dB, I would say. So we'll just boost this guy by about 14, go in the middle there, and we'll click apply. Ta-da! The volume across the board is boosted up and it's all cut off very elegantly and neatly at minus 2 dB. So that's one way you could do it. The other way, in Adobe Audition at least, is you can go up to this caret, click on that, go down to loudness, boom, and it brings open this window. Now, uh, the beauty of this one is it does all of that for you and adjusts the loudness overall to very specific measurements, uh, which is, in my mind, easier. And if you click on this carrot or this drop down menu, it gives you all of these different options. The one that I use is it to bis 1773 loudness. Uh, it has to do with a specific um, regulation for certain broadcasting stations but minus 16 luffs and a peak value of minus 2 db is what i use for my spotify ads i work with a company that i'll do the like this episode is brought to you by blah 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 this is the setting that they ask for so i'm gonna keep it i'll drag my demo over and there we go i'll click run and it will level my audio for me and it's ready to rock now we're ready to start comping together the demo so i click that multi-track button it pulls this one open and in adobe audition there are a number of presets available for multi-track sessions uh, meaning it's going to open in a certain format depending on how you tell it to this is the one that i like for things like this doing demos it's got a track for my voiceover a track for my music and then a master track which listens to both the voiceover and the music combined and treats everything there so as i'm processing things in this window um, that's what the master track will be helpful for so first things first i'm going to drag my voiceover in here 
and we're off to the races. Now, in terms of selecting music for your demo, there are a number of places you can go. I thought that Griffin's was excellently chosen and choreographed. Uh, for me, I use Epidemic Sound uh, or Epidemic Music, and that's a subscription service. I'm not affiliated with them. I just like and use their their artists I really dig. Uh, another option that folks use is Artlist, a uh, similar format to Epidemic Sound. But if you're not in the mood to pay for that kind of stuff, there's the Free Music Archive, FMA. They have a lot of artists posting stuff to the Creative Commons that has different licensing regulations. Sometimes you have to credit the musicians. Sometimes they don't mind if you don't credit the musicians. Sometimes they don't want you to use their music in a certain way. So all of that stuff is important to take into account, but it's a free resource if you would like, the Free Music Archive. I, however, went to Epidemic Sound and combed through for music that was similar to what Griffin was working with because I dug it. And I found this one. And now in looking at the waveform, I'll listen for sections that might be good for me to use. So if I look at this, I'll listen to Movement A, we'll play a little bit. Okay, let's listen to a little bit of movement B. That has a similar vibe to the piano chords that Griffin had in his, which I dug, so that will flag that as a potential. Uh, the other thing that I'll listen for are transitional moments from one movement to the next, such as this one. So that moving into that next movement. Moments like that, for my money at least, are helpful to put into demos at moments of change because it's a great opportunity to signal that change to the listener, to give an extra bit of uh, an extra dimension to your read, to the landscape that you're painting. So I like this section where we've got the sort of thumping, pulsing bit and then it moves into this. So we'll use that back in our multi-track session. So to get to that, I'm gonna drag my tune over here. I'm gonna zoom out a bit, and we'll just clip a bit of the music so we're not working with a huge audio file um, around the section that we're gonna look at. And I'm just gonna delete the rest because I don't need it. Now what I'll do is just drag this roughly, and that moment of transition in the music is right about here uh, in this track. And so I'm going to try to relate that change in the music in some way to the tip of the pyramid, the moment when I say the product or the company. Uh, and the reason I like to do that is because that's like, this is the solution. This is the thing that's going to change everything, uh, which I think is just a nice little touch. So let's listen to a bit of it and just see where we're starting off at. Expert instructors, engaging content, and 24-7 access ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. E-Learning Academy. Learn. Grow. Succeed. So... It fits, I think, musically, but you can tell right now that the music's competing a little bit too much with our voiceover. And part of that is I've got this processing on the master here, which is fiddling with a bunch of different bits of the audio that I don't really want to have it do at this point. So I'm gonna click that and turn it off. Uh, additionally, there's this dynamics processing on the music track. What this does is it is a side chain compression. Fancy word that really just says it's listening to my voiceover, I'm routing it to this compressor, and it's turning the volume down on the music when I'm talking. That side chain compression in a reductive sense. But if I mute my voiceover here and we listen to the music, You hear how it's like pulsing and turning up and down really rapidly? To fix that, I go into settings. I'm gonna go down to release time. Right now, it's super duper fast, which is why it's releasing that compression really rapidly. 
We're going to drag that out to like five or 600 milliseconds to make it much, much smoother. Uh, and then I'm also going to turn this up a bit just to see what happens. So I'm going to click that off, and now we'll listen to the music on its own to see if it's fixed that pulsing issue. It's closer, but it's still giving me a little too much for my taste. So we'll just drag that release out a bit more, maybe uh, drag out the attack a bit. And I'm also going to drag the release out on this one just for good measure. And let's try it again. That should work, I think, for the moment underneath the music. So now what I'm going to do is slice up my voiceover and time things out a bit more uh, precisely. And I'll do that at magic speed right bam now. All righty. So a bit of uh, movie magic there. We've sliced it up, diced it up. And in true cooking show fashion, I put something in the oven that was totally raw and immediately pulled something out that was finished. Um, so this is where we're at. Uh, I've done a couple of things. Uh, I sliced things up, moved them around to time it out a bit better uh, with the music, at least to my taste. And then there were a couple moments where the music was still competing a bit with my voiceover. So here, uh, where I say the title of the company, I've just turned the volume down, ducked it a bit artificial or manually ducked it a bit more underneath the uh, voiceover there. And the last thing I did was I've put in these fades. So in Adobe Audition, there are these squares here and you can pull them in and it'll fade whatever audio you're working with out. Uh, and then if I right click, I can change the type of fade that it is. Uh, linear is a more straight line and cosine has a more gentle in and out glide. So I prefer cosine at least on the way out um, and on the way in. So let's listen to the whole thing and see where we're at. Expert instructors. Engaging content and 24-7 access ensure you can learn anytime, anywhere. E-Learning Academy. Learn. Grow. Succeed. So, there it goes. It's not perfect, but uh, it works. And uh, as a DIY demo, I think that it's a great place to start off. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks so much again, Griffin, for sending this in. Uh, if you'd like feedback like this on your own work, there's a form in the description of this video. Send something my way and we'll give you some feedback. Until the next one, please be well and I'll see you there. Toodles. <laughs>